Here is a number to consider. 17 states in the U.S. now ban abortions after six weeks of pregnancy or sooner, with some exceptions. Just how surprising is it these restrictions are in place less than two years after Roe v. Wade was overturned? A new article from the New York Times responds to that question, exploring the history of six-week abortion bans and their increasing visibility in the United States. Elizabeth Dias covers religion for the New York Times and was interviewed for the article. Elizabeth, great to see you. She's also co-author of a soon-to-be-published book, The Fall of Roe, The Rise of a New America. Great to see you. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. What is the backstory of six-week abortion bans? What is its history? Right. I mean, I think so many people were surprised, right, when mm -hmm. Roe fell. Um, and you look at Florida, we've just got the latest six-week abortion ban. But there's actually a really long history here. And it's surprising to people, the anti-abortion movement leaders actually didn't always support a six-week ban. You go back 10 years uh, to Ohio, an evangelical activist named Janet Porter uh, had this idea. You know, she wanted to start a ban at six weeks, which was when she and the movement said, you can, they, they pegged it to when um, you could start to hear what they called a fetal heartbeat um, as a way to humanize the fetus, the embryo at that stage. And the big national leaders in the anti-abortion movement, even Ohio Right to Life, the Catholic bishops, they said, this is too extreme. This is going to set our movement back. Do not do this. Uh, and, you know, it was kind of on hold over the years until uh, former President Trump won and the whole ballgame changed. Um, and then they were able to incrementally move forward. And of course, we know that just about two years ago, Roe fell and sort of like dominoes, all these six weeks bans um, were able to so be So what was once viewed by that community, aggressive against abortion rights, as too extreme, is now neo-mainstream within the movement? It is, although the, the interesting thing now is the predictions from the, those mainstream movement leaders back then are actually, in a way, becoming true, right? Because uh, you see this wide backlash to these earlier and earlier abortion restrictions since the fall of Roe. Um, and one of the things we document in our book is, you know, how did the movement go from a place where there was a more uh, mainstream incremental approach to this more radical approach? And now you've got uh, movement leaders just begging, basically, could they do a 15-week um, national ban? Because um, they're just seeing the overwhelming majority backlash. To but within the community, is six backlashes. weeks becoming now a litmus test for your purity? You know, this really depends on, on where who you, you ask and on where you, who you are. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Like, we've seen, uh, just look at the difference between Arizona um, and the efforts, the Republicans, who are very, very anti-abortion in the state legislature there. Uh, had uh, to try, they were trying very hard to keep this ban from 1864, which would have made almost all abortion illegal. Um, and then they, they narrowly failed that by just one, one vote. Um, but then over in Florida, a six-week ban was just put into place. So these are very critical states, especially a place like Arizona, battleground states um, for the presidency. And, you know, we, we just haven't seen a presidential election no like this before. It's always been 50 years of, of Roe, which has given the Republican Party this rallying cry for their base. But now that dynamic is totally flipped um, in favor of Democrats. Elizabeth Dias, thank you very much.